All right, traders, let's take a look here. Pre-market analysis, SK is just talking about uh, a beautiful buy signal. So let's go ahead and analyze this. We're going to take a look at a couple of ways that we're building strength of signal, and we'll look at this particular market. First and foremost, I want you to focus in on this level right down here. Now, we've got a DSR level there. I don't have the DSR levels applied to this area, but we've got DSR majors down here around the 103 handle. We've also got an even number over here. So an even handle, 103s, 102, 101, and so on in crude oil. All right, so what he recognized is we came in, we went extreme oversold here, bullish divergence here, and we just continued to show that bullish divergence on the multiple retests of the 103s. Here's the 8 o'clock open right here. Up here, this stands for previous close. So on my range trader, I've got the previous close identified here. So we know that the market has gapped open, so the go trade is present. We gapped lower. So in order for the market to fill the gap, the market needs to rally. So when we look for the buy signal, just like we looked at last week in the S&P 500, in order for the market to fill the gap, the market has to rally. So the gap trade gets an SOS 1. We went oversold, SOS 2. We did bullish divergence, SOS 3. So that's an SOS 3 trade right there. So he's already hit his 18 tick target, so he's got 180 in the bank. And now he's trailing stops as the market rallies to go fill that gap. And remember, we talked about this in prior sessions. This gap typically fills 90% of the gap value of the gap. So here's our 8 o'clock open right here. So let's just use 103 for an even number. Previous close, 103.63. So the value of the gap is 63 cents. 90% of 63 is 54. So we take the 103 plus 54. And the gap fills at 90% right there at 103.54s. The high so far right here has been 103.51. So based on that right there, we've got the black tip. You see this extreme overbought condition. That's my 51 RSI, 5 by 1. Right there's the opportunity to cover the balance or trail stops. So if he pulled his stops in behind our fib dots right here at 39, the trail stops would be resting at 39 using the number rounding strategy right here. Let me go ahead and I'll lighten this up just one. So trail stops would be in at 39. Now that gives us the opportunity for an additional push. So since we're on this crude oil, we're going to take a look at this. So the bottom line is he's got probably around 380 built into the second contract if that's where he has the trail stops. So a quick $500 winner on a two lot and that's trading the gap fill using a counter trend divergence style of entry down here, SOS threes. And again, if I pulled in my DSR levels, we'll have at least a DSR minor that was built right down here off of that level. Now we're going to look to potentially fade the fill. So we've got the go trade off the open. The market either fills the gap or it does not. If the market rallies in this case to go fill the gap, now we look to fade that gap fill. So here we've got extreme overbought followed by the anticipated higher low. Now let's look for a retest of this high, possible new structure high, and then short entries around the 0360s. As I look left right here, I've got structure resistance here at 0360. Now let's go ahead and let's go into a higher time frame. Here's our hourly chart. So last week we talked about this beautiful symmetry. Okay, so we took the S&P 500 right here, and we looked at the impulse move down to 1830s. That's the A to B leg. We then watched the B to C leg form back to 1869. We put in this beautiful symmetrical double top, talked about short entries here, and also buy the puts on the SPY. Rolled over here. We did an aggressive first test. This was the left side. Buy right here. We got stopped out right here. And then as we declined here, we projected that the value of this A to B leg 
would present itself again right here in the C to D leg called a one-to-one -one measured move. And we drove right to my one-to-one -one measured move. We projected 1805s to 1414. This is one piece of technical data. We had our AB equals CD right here, or a symmetrical or measured move. That was our second piece of technical data. Now we've got a DSR major that's formed down here. I've got my fish alert where we look to bottom fish, my black tip, all of that present. So from there, now we might anticipate the value of this last rally could present itself again right here. Again, we're watching market symmetry. So we're looking left right here, S&Ps. We talked about that 1830 to 32 handle right here on the shorts. As we look to retest right there, we only made it to 28. We still had a qualified sell signal intraday. Retested it again right here, 1 o'clock prior session. And again, now we're overbought bearish divergence right here on our hourly chart. So good low risk short entries right here. Stops have to go at about 35 quarter. All right, so let's pull in crude oil. All right, so crude oil's pulled back down. Now you see we've got a beautiful DSR major. I dropped in this horizontal line. We did the analysis the other day at that 104.50 to 460 area. Didn't quite get to the 460s. You see that I've got a 1414 fib extension. We'll reduce uh, the size of that. That horizontal line represents structure resistance as we look left. And then we pull back. The DSR level set off this swing low here. Here's my beautiful retest. And again, this is the left side right here. There's too much time between this test and this test to consider that a double bottom. I want that 18 to 30 bar pattern, 18 to 30 bars. Down here on the bottom left, we go oversold. 26 bars later or so, there's our bullish divergence long entry. The DSR level was plotting from this left-hand side right here. Okay? So that's the beautiful buy signal. From the $99 crude oil, A, buy USO calls. B, those of you that trade the futures contracts, buy the futures contract. And then again, if it's a swing trade overnight, remember your margin increases about threefold over intraday margin. So if I can day trade a contract in crude oil for 700, it's going to cost me 2,500, maybe 3,500 dollars to hold that position overnight. And when we trade these on our higher time frame hourly charts, we have to be cognizant of that. All right, so right here in crude, we had a nice little pop. You can see here, we do have a little support. So you'll see right here, again, this thing got volatile. I'll go ahead and remove my FIB analysis since we hit those tops. You can see structure resistance on the way up. Here, let me just pull this in so you get a better visual. We drove through it. We found some support right here at the 350s. This level is the 370, so it's about a 20 cent window right there. If I took this swing low right there and I cropped the wicks, that's where we're looking at at 10350s. And that's the level that we've just hit. So again, we do have structure relevance right here in crude oil. At about the same time, we're popping in crude oil up to this previous close. So this 10350, 10360 area is great. Okay, thank you. All right, so great trade. Uh, let me see. SK said he covered the balance there at 103.40. So, C gang, we use the turning point black tip. Remember, right there is our two bar cluster trade. The turning point followed immediately by the black tip, and then we talked about buy next bar market. So, if all you did was looked at your cluster two signals, especially on our swing trades, our higher time frames. So, if I bought the next bar market, I get long at about 316. My stop has to go below that swing low. So you see that's 15 cents. We always use a initial stop loss of around 18 cents in crude oil. Okay, so if I risked 18, I didn't get stopped. The market moved 15 cents against me. And then over here is where the 15 tick or 18 tick target was hit. As long as it goes one tick through our price, we record that as a winner. Limit orders are guaranteed to fill. 
Okay, and then he took the balance off as the market hit this black tip right here with this extreme RSI. He covered the balance on the pullback, got filled right there at 40s. Yeah, so plus 18 and then plus about 40 cents on the balance or 38 cents. Now here is a symmetrical double top. We've got bearish divergence. So again, I want you to note the visual price pattern. Make sure you're watching those training videos that I'm doing on the double top, double bottom, how to use the cluster 2 and cluster 3, as well as the 2618 trade. So if I sell them right here, we've, we're looking to fade the fill on the gap. And if I sell them before we get to that actual prior close number, I'm going to add a little bit of risk to that trade. If I wait, however, for it to go to the previous close, knowing that we filled 92% of the gap or so, I might miss the signal. So again, this is where your trading plan becomes incredibly important. In your trading plan, you either do or do not sell at the prior close. If we're going to sell the previous close or fade the gap fill, then we can create a range that sets around that previous close. So in crude oil, as an example, we might say that I'm going to sell the previous close plus or minus five ticks. So we take the value of the previous close at 63, subtract five ticks, that's 58. The value of the previous close plus five ticks would be 68. So that creates a little five tick window on either side or a 10 tick window total. Because obviously the market doesn't always just go right to the previous close and then stop. If you do not quantify it that way and put that into your trading plan, then what you're more likely to do is, if, if this one rolls over as an example, there's my black tip again. If I get a turning point on this one, that'll be a three bar cluster, overbought bearish divergence. If I don't take this trade because it didn't hit the pri previous close, and the market now rolls over and comes all the way back down to the 03 handle, the current range low and this massive structure support zone, then I just missed that $500 plus winner. Obviously, if I miss that winner, that feels like pain to me. So now I might be a little bit cautious about that. Okay? So the pain of that missed opportunity and that missed profit puts me in a position where I say, you know what? I'm going to start selling these lower. I can't believe I just missed $500, all because I just didn't sell them right here when I got my signal. So then gradually I start selling them lower, lower, lower. And the next thing you know, I'm getting short 12 ticks away from the previous close. And then when the market goes and rallies to the previous close, I get stopped out right here, and then the market rolls over. And then I say, oh man, I should have just waited for the previous close. I should have just followed my rules of engagement. Had I just followed my rules, I would have not been stopped out and taken a $360 loss, and instead I would have made 450 So remember, we always talk about the upside and the downside to everything. Psychology is critically important. Okay, so now we're going to roll up, possibly go grab that previous close. Notice on the right side right here, I do not have my black tip turning point. So if I wait for my turning point at this price level, then I still haven't gotten short. The market's made new structure highs. If I sold it right here, 350, my stops would have been at 71. The market came right to 69s and 70s. All right, so here's a turning point black tip possible. We're back into overbought. So this is the left side of a potential double top. So again, if I'm aggressive, I can sell this cluster two or cluster three first test. There's the previous close. If I'm not, I have to wait for this area to hold. Then I want to see it put in a symmetrical double top. This is likely to be a black tip. There it is. So let's sell the first half market. Now from the 363s, plus 10 is 73, plus another 8 is 81. There's an 18 tick stop. Yeah, I'm going to let this one run. Now we'll see if we pull back right here and then put in a double top. Now obviously it doesn't mean that the market's going to stop there. We could easily bull right through this area. But we also know that this level represents a price point right here 
As you look left right here, these spike highs came in at 76. Okay, so it gives the market the opportunity to go and test the swing highs here from the afternoon session about five days ago, four days ago. And this could be a bit of a head and shoulders top. Here's my left shoulder, neckline. I've got a symmetrical double top on the head, neckline, and then potentially a right shoulder over here. All right, let's come back over here. Keep our eye on this on the bottom right-hand side. Okay, so go trade worked, beautiful buy signal. Plus four to 500 there based on your position sizing. And now here's fade the fill. So gap fill, fade the fill. Gap fill, fade the fill. Gap fill, fade the fill. And I found some uh, training uh, from a couple of years ago, the go trade on a five-minute chart. I produced that last, last night. So traders, I'll get that up so you can watch that. 1,500 tick S&P up here, top left-hand side. Let's drop our DSR levels in. I'm pretty sure we're at a uh, significant price point up there. We're going to put in a 6,000 tick DSR levels. Good morning, Simon. Welcome. All right, gang. Now, um, on this uh, scalper, on crude oil, I'm going to handle this as... It's the, I'm, I'm looking for the extended target. Okay, so we'll go ahead. Those of you that trade a two lot, we'll look at the um, 18 tick target. Okay, so I'm going to pull this down. 63, we need to see 43 would be 20. So there's our 18 tick target right there in blue. Okay, so imagine we've got a limit order resting at 46. I'll go ahead and drop in a sell limit up here to add the other piece on a retest of the current highs. All right, Mini Russell, top right-hand side, we've gapped higher. Okay, so I'm going to tighten this down. Look left, you see that we have a beautiful ratio sell signal right here. Fibonacci retracement, we go from the swing high to this new structure low. Fibonacci extension from the swing low, impulse high. And you see we got a beautiful point of confluence right there. So we put in a double top right here at the one or 1123s. We go impulse, new structure low, retrace, extend, project. Look at this bad boy falling off right now to come down and fill that gap. Now we've got structure right here. Okay, so basically here's 1110s. 1110 to 1111 right here, a one-point move. And we've got all of this down here right where that go trade is going to fill. So we'll watch fade the fill right there. See if we had a symmetrical double top there for an SOS3 sell signal in the mini Russell. Yeah, so see, gang, not a real clear signal. We got the black tip right here. Okay, I've got my turning point resting behind that. This is more of a V-top. We saw this press, and then we just go stop. So that's a hit-and-run type of signal. Now we're coming down. We're going to fill that gap. Let's see if we get buy signals right here around the 1110 handle. S&P over here, top left-hand side, 1811. Okay, here's our previous close right here at 25. So about a five-point gap there, nothing real significant. Market's pulling down. We've already filled the gap in the S&P. Yeah, let's take the uh, NASDAQ down to a 233 tick here real quickly. We'll reduce uh, the time period so we can see more qualified signals. All right, so again, look left in the NASI. I've got my fish alert. We're bottom fishing down here. Okay, we've come back. My previous close is here, and I've got structure relevance as I look left. So 3468 is an area of interest. I want to see the double bottom here, and then I'd like to see a higher close for that potential buy signal. Remember, we watched these 
uh, last week in that prior session. Yeah, as long as we wait for a retest. So on this one right here, traders, what we're looking at is we're going to allow the fish alert to basically set the left side for a potential entry. Okay, so we let it set the left side, and then we want to see the retest with bearish divergence and a lower close. So right here, we would have sold them at around 81.50s. Market moved against us right there by four points before it came back down and got a 10-point target. And again, there's the previous close. So right here is the sell signal at 7 on the 233 tick. That's right. So if the system is short from right here, the market's trading above that area but not stopped out, or even on this retest at 807, you can enter any of those. So the question always is, what is the current position of the strategy? If the strategy is short, then has it been stopped out? If no, then look for the short entry. So NASDAQ, gap fill. Crude oil, gap fill. S&P's filled the gap. All right, now let's take a look over here. Let's pop through a couple of these. So nice area again there in crude oil. Uh, let's look at NASI. Okay, so NASDAQ, we have this massive level coming in here, 3493s. That's the spike high. If we crop the wicks, we got close to that at the 3485s. So you see, again, that 3485 handle held this morning. Beautiful qualified sell. So when I do my higher time frame analysis, I see that I've got key price points there at 3485. We've come back to fill the gap. If we take out the 3465s intraday, then let's look for the press back here. Love the short entries with stops above 34.93. So swing traders, stops at 35.03 quarters on any shorts right here, and then targets back into 34.35 area. So again, about 50 points of opportunity versus only about 15 points of risk. Dow Jones. Yeah, and then Bob just popped out here. We've got a, I'm reloading my data here. Let's go take a look. TF. So he's looking for the 2618 trade. So remember, gang, the 2618 starts with a symmetrical double top or double bottom. Then we have to see a move through the previous swing. So again, here we're buried oversold. We've got a turning point black tip. So we just made a lower low, lower close. Again, I want you to note, see this area right here, 1110, we have to put stops below the swing lows right there if we get long. So right there is a beautiful buy signal. I'll put partials out. Yeah, and on any long entries right here, 111140 should have already been long right there. Here's our pullback. There's oversold. Lower high, bullish divergence at our gap fill. So over here on the right-hand side, we just filled our gap, and there's the two-bar cluster. Turning point, followed immediately by the black tip. Okay, so again, we're going to see a 11.12.50. If this thing rallies up here and goes and retests this high, we know we've already gotten our 18 to 20 tick target, so I don't want the trade anymore. If we pull back right now, this swing high holds, then we'll look for a double bottom and then a potential rally off of that. Okay, so again, gap trade, go trade winner in the, the Russell, NASDAQ, crude oil. Let's take a look at our Dow. Okay, Dow Jones stronger than the other three right now, and we are back into this price point on the Dow. So there's the 16,150s. 
Let's pop in our base RSI. And let's take our ATR, move it to the bottom. So we'll move that to panel three. We'll put our RSI, panel two. Bada bing, bada beautiful. All right, so again, see this ATR? 56 points or 50 points during the day. Obviously, volatility declines during the Globex trade. So here's our RSI. We're showing overbought right here as we make new highs. All right, so I'm going to kill this one right here. There was our qualified buy signal. We already hit our target one. I missed the uh, entry. So it's oversold, lower high, bullish divergence, fade the fill, and there's the two-bar cluster. Turning point, black tip, buy the next bar market, and so far we're up 270 bucks. So again, an 18 or 20 tick target has been hit. Now we've got a break above, close above, and we'll see if we can get back into this 1118 area. Beautiful trade. Yeah, congratulations. All right, let's pull this guy back up here. S&P, look at this, gang. We filled the gap right here. S&P, new structure highs. Okay, crude oil, we rallied into that area. Again, if we get through this big monster area in crude, we'll look for a bull day in crude oil. Opportunities to get long. There's a retest over here on the NASI, bottom left-hand side. So let's see if we retest this big 3485 handle. If we retest on the right side now, I'm going to look for a possible short entry. Yeah, now remember, I did an adverse excursion over here on the uh, crude oil. So if this guy pulls back down here, I'll take partials. At 56, we'll pull the uh, scalper out. And then if we break structure, we'll look for a run back to the 103 handle there on crude. Yeah, beautiful trade. Now, we've got overbought bearish divergence up here top right on the Russell. Now off to new structure highs. So you can trail these based on swings. Yeah, here's an aggressive sell top right hand or bottom left hand side in NASI. And there we go. New structure highs. S&P new highs. NASDAQ now off to new highs. Yeah, so just beautiful long entries, gang. Look at the Russell over here. Okay, DST owners trailing your stops right there. You see now we went extreme overbought. There's our turning point, and we're back into that previous structure resistance zone. So several options. A, cover. B, trail stops aggressively. C, look for a possible sell signal. S&P's broken to new structure highs, and we're back into that 1832 handle. All right, so you can see the S&Ps right here, that previous swing, 1832. So this is kind of the break point right there. Get an hourly trade above, close above. This is our 8 o'clock candle that closes at 9. We've got 19 minutes left. If this hourly closes above, then we'll look for a press to the 1842 handle right here. Okay, so I'll pull this down to our 1842. This would be a symmetrical move that would be equidistant to this last swing right here. So it's an if-then or conditional statement. S&P new highs. Yeah, you can add the fib dots. Let's go ahead and add our uh, fib dots over here. Fib dots, let's use our classic 2618. I'll turn the sound off right there. And let's go uh, bearish, black, bullish. Chartreuse. Yeah, typically use your fib dots plus or minus two ticks. 
So here is our buy signal down there. There's the SOS4 buy with a cluster 2 on the right side. Okay, target 1 attained plus 180 or 200. If you're using an 18 or a 20 tick target. And then your stops right now would be at the fib dots minus 2 ticks. So 11, 16, 30 right now. 11, 16, 40 right now. S&P new highs. There we go. NASDAQ new highs. Beautiful trades, gang. Congratulations. A couple of you reporting that you did the, the gap trade and then the fade the fill. So again, already over $1,000 this morning if you just did two markets. And again, it's these types of days that will set you up for the entire week. Okay, so you see crude oil having trouble right there at this 103.60 to 80 range. We saw that in a higher time frame analysis. And the S&P, let's go ahead and spread this chart out. We're gone pecan now on the spoos. Taking out the 32s, no problem. Likely we get a higher close here. So we could go see 35s right here. Or I'm sorry, 42s right here. Okay, so top right-hand side, 11.1670 minus 2 is 16.50. Number round down, so you're at 1640 on your trail stops. Long entries down here around 1240, so that's another 400 bucks on the second, 550 to 600 dollars on that if you get stopped out right here. All right, now bottom left, again, everything's in context. My fish alert sets up the left side, here's the right side. I've got no DSR levels, I've got nothing here. We've taken out our 85 handle. Now let's see if we get this to a new structure low, then a favorable excursion sell right over here. All right, Russell traders, beautiful trade. I'll flatten the Russell. Okay, now note right here on the bottom left, NASDAQ has not broken that previous swing low. So here's a NASDAQ, beautiful example, gang. Overbought, high or low, bearish divergence. The swing low holds right here on the retest. Remember, the favorable excursion needs a break and a close below. Then the return. 